you're well. So we have this video that's going absolutely viral on Twitter right now. I mean, it is blowing up. The last time I checked, it had millions of views. Maybe it has tens of millions of views now. And it's this clip from one of or Joe Biden's economic advisor. I don't know the guy's specific title, but this is going to completely blow your mind. We always ask the question on this channel, are these central planners and authoritarians, are they idiots? Are they evil? Or are they both? And <laughs> I, I think the bottom line is you can't eliminate the option of them being complete idiots. And in fact, I would lean more towards both for sure, because they're definitely evil. We all know that. But before we get into this clip, and I'm going to comment on it, many, many people have asked me to do so on Twitter. And I did, we'll kind of go through that, summarize, uh, kind of, the, we'll summarize the gist of what this guy is trying to say. But this just shows you the level of ignorance we are dealing with at such an incredibly high level. And before we get into the clip, I want to remind you of one of my va very favorite quotes from Atlas Shrugged. Let's get right over there. And uh, you're not going to be able to see it because I'm, I'm not going to be able to switch up the screen share. But I'll read it to you guys really quick. So I, I want to have this quote frame the video that we're going to watch here in just a moment. So here's the quote from Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged. When you see that in order to produce, you need to obtain permission from men who produce nothing. When you see that money is flowing to those who deal, not in goods, but in favors. When you see that men get richer by graft and by pull than by work, and your laws don't protect you against them, but protect them against you. When you see corruption being rewarded and honesty becoming a self-sacrifice, you may know that your society is doomed. So now let's go over to this video clip and ask yourself, how do you think this guy got his job? Do you think it was through merit? Or do you think it was through graft, poll, political favors, or what he could do for the Biden administration because of his connections with other politicians or Wall Street? Let me do a screen share. And we're going to go over to this guy. Usually I'd hate to throw someone like this under the, well, I take that back. <laughs> it was an average person, but this is a, a public figure, a politician. So no, we're going to take off the gloves on this one for sure. So this guy is, uh, let's see, let's get over to, this is the, the video. Oh, here we go. They've got his title right here. So we can just pull up the video. And then it lends that much. Okay. I'm not going to be able to zoom in. Money by, no, uh, it won't let me zoom by. in, but you guys can see it. The main thing is you've got the audio turned up so you can hear exactly what this buffoon is saying. His name is Jared Bernstein, and I'm reading right off the video because this these are clips, by the way, from a new documentary that's coming out. I, I think about MMT from what I can gather because it's got Stephanie Kelton in there. But, uh, oh, here we go. He is the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. So the bottom line is he advises Biden, Joe Biden, our president, on economic policy. Here you go. Buckle up for this one. It is definitely, definitely stiff drink time when you realize that these are the types of people that are in charge of the United States. The U.S. government can't go bankrupt because we can print our own money. It obviously begs the question, why exactly are we borrowing in a currency that we print ourselves? I'm waiting for someone to stand up and say, 
why do we borrow our own currency in the first okay, place? Okay, so I'm going to address this, the Stephanie Kelton part as well. But before we get there, let's go through this Jared Bernstein, <laughs> the rest of this just complete mental whiff. Like you said, they print the dollar. So why why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the uh, so the I mean, again, some of this stuff gets some of the language that the I mean, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money, and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money, and then it lends that money by... Okay, uh, so at the very beginning, I was, I was trying to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. I said, well, maybe they got some creative editing in here. But then he starts, and you heard him right. He said the government prints money. Oh, absolutely. They print money. They print money. And then they, they lend that money out. I'm like, well, maybe he just said that on accident. And then he says it twice. <laughs> He's like, they print the money and then they lend it out? I'm like, what? Who, who, what, huh? What, what are we talking about here? But let's go back <laughs> so you could, uh, you could hear this again. Definitely prints money and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. It lends uh, the money out by selling bonds. So let me get this straight. The government lends, oh, wait a minute. It prints the money first, and then it lends it out in the process of borrowing it simultaneously. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. This, These are the people that are in charge right now? Absolutely unbelievable. Again, think about that Ayn Rand quote. This is how you know the United States, the economy, fill in the blank, is doomed. Because you've got these guys, these types of people running the show. It has no business being there from a standpoint of merit. Zero. He's only gotten into that position. I can assure you, especially after watching these clips, he's only got into that position because of who he knows or some sort of political favors that he can get for the Biden administration. Is that what they do? They, they, you know, I've um, got to rewind that, that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money and then it lends that money by, uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times, at least to my ear with, with MMT, the, the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing, but there is no question that the government prints money and then it uses that money to, um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I don't, I can't really talk. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Like, cause it's like the government clearly prints money. It does it all the time and it clearly borrows. Otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation. So I don't think there's anything confusing there. I don't think there's anything confusing there from a guy that literally could not be more confused. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, if he wasn't a politician or one of these central planners and authoritarians, it, this would be hard to watch. But since he is in that position, therefore, by default, you know that he is not only ignorant, but most likely evil. I mean, this is great. You can just sit back, get a, a, a bag of popcorn, and just watch this over and over and over <laughs> again. I mean, come on. Oh, my goodness. You know, this reminds me, I was reading in the news today that Nancy Pelosi got some award uh, for who knows what. And I'm just like... 
you know, if you were a criminal sociopath, why would you not run for office? I, I mean, think about it. You can create, you can commit as many crimes as you want. You have no chance of going to jail, zero chance. And not only will you not go to jail, but you'll just get awards. I, I mean, it, it, absolutely stay. This is shocking, shocking. Now let's get over to answering the more serious questions. You know, I was trying to think if I could even, oh, that's weird. I'm watching myself here. Oh, that's bizarre. Uh, let's see. Is this screen share still working? Yes, it is. Okay. Now I'm as confused as the guy on the video. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is weird. I'm watching myself. Hmm, this is bizarre. Okay, this is like a... Anyway, getting back to this. Now, this is my feed. Hopefully, you guys can see this. And answering the specific questions. What I was saying is, if I had this guy in front of me, and by the way, it looks like this is trending now on Twitter. But if I had this guy in front of me, and we were just having lunch, there were no cameras, nothing... I was trying to think about if if I could even explain to him the process of what's going on behind the scenes as far as the plumbing. Or I don't even know if I could explain to him. You could give me three hours with this guy and a whiteboard. And I still don't know that I could understand the, the very, very, very basics of what this gal is asking him in the interview it would still probably go right over his head because if you're in this position and you are, let's just call a spade a spade. If you are this effing stupid at this level, I mean, I don't think there's any hope. I mean, uh, no amount of George Gammon whiteboard videos will ever, ever, ever help you. <laughs> I mean, Holy cow. But is it any is it any surprise that he lands in government? Of course not. Because what's he going to do in the private sector? I mean, he doesn't even have the intellectual capacity to flip burgers at McDonald's, for heaven's sakes. But let's get into the more serious topics here that the gal that was asking him the question was trying to get at. So does the government print money? If so, why on earth? Do they have to borrow? And and by the way, Kelton, although I might not agree with her, and you know she doesn't include the banking system, but she's a smart gal. I mean, she she's nothing like this Bernstein guy. So let's go over this. In practice, the government doesn't print broad money. So let's first and foremost differentiate between base money, that would be the dollars, the bank reserves on the Fed's balance sheet that they control completely, and the broad money which you can look at M2 money supply if you want to. That would be a, a metric of broad money. But basically, the commercial bank deposit liabilities, right? Those are the currency units that are really out there circulating, chasing goods and services. And for the most part, the Fed doesn't really control broad money. Who controls broad money? You guys know this very well from watching my videos. It would be the banks. It would be the banks. Now, and they do this through lending money dollars into existence. Okay. Does the Fed impact M2? Well, they can in certain situations. So let's get into that. So getting back to the original answer here, in practice, the government doesn't print broad money, broad money, commercial bank deposit liabilities. They borrow tax spend money almost entirely created by banks Assuming, assuming the transaction, the initial transaction, where the government actually took in the money. So when Janet Yellen is taking the money into the Treasury, the TGA, which is a liability of the Federal Reserve. So what she's doing is she's taking in bank reserves. So when you look at the TGA and it's at, let's say, 700 billion, that means there's 700 billion of bank reserves that have gone from the bank's balance sheets down into Janet Yellen's balance sheet, okay? But what has happened is the broad money, assuming none of these transactions 
initially, meaning the transactions of taxation or buying the treasury to begin with, assuming those were all coming from non-bank entities, then what would happen, those bank reserves would go into the TGA and then M2 money supply would shrink by that amount. All right. So let's assume for a moment that she sells 500,000 worth, or excuse me, 500 billion worth of bonds and she taxes 500 billion. Great. And that's all from non-bank entities. M2 money supply would go down by that amount. So 1 trillion. And then 1 trillion of bank reserves would go from the bank's balance sheets, that's a liability of the Fed, down into the TGA. Okay. But now what? So if that was the only part of the transaction, then it would actually decrease the broad money supply. But what ends up happening is Janet Yellen eventually will spend that money back into the economy. So when she does, those bank reserves, let's just say a trillion, goes from the TGA back onto the bank's balance sheets, while the Fed's balance sheet hasn't changed at all because just the composition changes. And then what happens is when she spends out all the stimmy checks, the Social Security checks, the, the, the checks to the defense contractors, whatever it is, they deposit the money into the bank and therefore M2 goes back up by the trillion dollars that it originally went down by. Okay, so in this process of government spending, there is no net impact on broad money, M2 money supply. Okay, but if this is a transaction, the initial transaction of the bank, so let's just say that Janet Yellen is taxing a bank, well, then we're not impacting M2 broad money. No impact at all. So when those bank reserves go into the TJ and then go right back out, they go back out in the form of commercial bank deposit liabilities. So that would be an increase. You see, and we're not even talking about the Federal Reserve. Not even talking. The Fed isn't even involved yet. Not even involved in the equation. So the key here to remember is that when a bank buys an asset from a non-bank entity, that is going to increase M2 money supply. That's going to increase broad money. That would be quote unquote money printing. They're creating money that did not exist before. So there's two ways a bank can do that. Number one, like we said, buying an asset from a non-bank entity or lending money to a non-bank entity. Both of those transactions involve simply going to their or to your bank account, let's say, and increasing the balance from zero up to whatever it is. So let's say they bought a billion dollars of the treasuries from you. Okay, well, they would go ahead and increase your balance from zero up to a billion. That's a billion dollars that didn't exist before. In other words, an increase of broad money, aka an increase of M2 money supply. And the exact same thing would happen if the bank came out and said, hey, we're going to lend you a billion dollars. Boom. How do they do that? Where does the money come from? They just simply increase your bank account balance from zero up to a billion. Exact same process. You see? So then if a bank deals with a bank, then there's no impact on the commercial bank deposit liabilities, i.e. broad money, aka M2 money supply. And the Federal Reserve is simply a bank. So if there's the Federal Reserve dealing with JP Morgan, okay, no impact. But if JP Morgan dealing with average Joe or hedge fund or Procter and Gamble, Apple, mega corporation, then there's going to be an impact. You see, that's how you have to start from asking, is this a transaction bank to bank or bank non-bank? Getting back to it here. So if it's a bank that's being taxed or if it's a bank uh, they're borrowing from, they, Janet Yellen, uh, the treasury, then this would include base money only to begin with. And then the spending, step number two, when she's sending out the stimmy check, like we said, would involve the base money going back to the bank's balance sheets, including an offsetting liability, 
which is the additional broad money. In other words, the additional commercial bank deposit liability. Next, the Fed can print base money, which can impact broad money supply via QE if non-banks are selling. You see, this is why it's important to start with that framework, asking what are the entities involved in the transaction? You see, so if it's Fed buying treasuries through QE and if non-banks are selling, then yes, that's going to impact M2, just like if JP Morgan was buying. It's, it's, it's no different. But if the Fed is buying a treasury from JP Morgan, then it doesn't impact anything at all. So this increases broad money while keeping the non-bank's balance sheet. Okay, now this is important. So if the Fed or a, a bank, if you will, is buying, let's just focus on the Fed. If the Fed is doing QE and buying from a non-bank entity, the non-bank entity is selling, M2 goes up, but what happens to the actual balance sheet of that non-bank entity? It stays the same because they started with treasury, then they end up with cash and treasury is basically a cash equivalent. That's why Snyder says it's just an asset swap, regardless of whether it's with a bank or a non-bank entity like a corporation. In theory, the government could print money like they did during the Civil War instead of issue treasuries. So this goes all the way back to 1862 and something called the Legal Tender Act. When what's interesting is I actually when I was doing research for this for a whiteboard video, I read about the dialogue back and forth or the, the, the debate between the politicians when they were trying to figure out how to fund the Civil War. And what was interesting is they didn't want to issue bonds because they didn't want the general public to be burdened with the uh, responsibility of paying that back plus interest. They didn't think that would be right. So they floated the idea of actually printing the money. Now, now this is money printing because this is when the government is actually creating green pieces of paper to buy the machine guns. Oh, I, I guess they didn't have machine guns, but the guns or the horses or the whatever the heck they, they used back in the, the Civil War. So that that is completely different because now the government is absolutely unequivocally adding to at broad money, AKA M2 money supply. Okay. So, uh, and, and I, again, what was ironic about that is they, they did that. Uh, they ended up doing that because they didn't want to unfairly burden the general public. And they thought, well, maybe this is going to create inflation. Maybe not. We might as well roll the dice because if we issue treasuries and we know definitively that they, the general public is going to have to pay this back. And of course, we know what happened is it created so much consumer price inflation that <laughs> it would have been far better off for them to just issue the bonds to begin with. So if the government went back and did something like that, then sure, yeah, that, that, that would be money printing. But in practice, they don't really do that. They haven't done it since the Civil War. But theoretically, they could. So then I go to answer Kelton's question specifically, and I say, well, why wouldn't they? Well, number one, because if they just stop issuing bonds, treasuries, cold turkey, and then just print the money, that the whole entire global economy would implode. You guys know that from just watching my videos. You're, you're, you're taking quite literally the only pristine collateral out of the, and, and what the entire monetary system is built on. And you're just taking that right out of the system. I, I mean, you're, you're talking about us living in caves for heaven's sakes. That, that is Armageddon quite literally. Number two, uh, and this goes back to the mechanics because what Stephanie, and, and maybe she has talked about this. So I, I want to, I want to be fair here. Maybe she's talked about this in her book and I haven't read this part or something. But if you just had the government print money, just like in 1862, well, well, you're not extracting any money to begin with. Right? Remember when they're in the very first thing I said, when they're dealing with the non-bank entities, if the non-bank entity is borrowing, excuse me, is uh, is lending to the government, in other words, buying the treasury, 
Well, then their bank account is decreasing. If they're paying taxes, what, what happens when you pay tax? This It's right around April, May. You guys know when you pay your taxes, what happens to the amount that you have in your bank account? It goes down, doesn't it? And then when the government sends that money right back out, well, the money goes into someone's bank account that they stole from you. <laughs> it might go into Nancy Pelosi's bank account, or it probably goes into Jared Bernstein's bank account, but it goes into somebody's. So therefore, on net, there's no increase to the currency units, although there's an increase to the aggregate balance sheet. So just like in 1862, if the government printed the money, now all of a sudden they're not extracting it from the economy to begin with. So any money that they would spend would be a net addition, a net addition to M2 money supply, i.e. broad money. You see, that's why they can't do it. And Stephanie knows that. I'm sure she's said that in her books because she's a smart gal. Right. Again, I, I don't agree with her on everything, but if we were having a one on one conversation and I I said, Stephanie, look, if you did that, you're going to increase them, too. If, if you're not taxing it or you're not taking it out of the system, she'd be like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. But, yeah, I, I got to sell some books somehow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so then finally, I say, think how sad it is that a YouTuber who almost flunked out of high school, it's never taken an econ class, it's never taken a finance class, can sit there and explain this to you right off the top of his head. <laughs> Quite very easily, honestly. But yet 99% of the experts out there have no clue about what I just said. In fact, they probably couldn't even couldn't even follow what I just said. I guarantee you Jared Bernstein couldn't follow it. Even, even if I did have a whiteboard and even if I had three hours to explain it to him, just it, it, using like the, the most simple language. Like if I tried to, ex you guys remember the Dick and Jane books that we had in elementary school? It probably ages me, but I know many of you on the live stream remember that. See Dick run, see Jane hop, see spot jog or C spot eat or whatever it is. I, I would, even if I could explain it to Jared, even if I wrote a Dick and Jane book on does the government print money, it would still be over Jared's head. <laughs> oh, this is the world we are living in. You've got two choices. You can either laugh or you can cry. And it is so absurd that I just choose to laugh because we've got one life to live, guys. And at the end of the day, you got to make the best of it. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy your... Oh, no, we're not to the weekend yet. Enjoy your Friday coming up. And as always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market, capitalism. We'll see you in the next video.